New Hero General Tearless for the month of May 2024 for the game King of God Castle. Hey, now here in this video, it is that time again. I'll be ranking the newest hero, Dandelit, as well as the new rework, Kanak. And there is a lot of movement in here. There's a lot of change. You know, this is why we do this update every month. If you are new here, this is a general hero tier list that I update every month. Be sure to subscribe and keep up with that monthly. And this is why we do it every like period, small period of time. The power rankings of every hero changes and this is why this is the nature of king of God castle boys if you guys have been playing for a long time you guys know what exactly what i'm talking about all right we're gonna go straight into, there's a lot of heroes guys okay like these tier tier lists just keep on getting longer and i'm just gonna have to keep on talking faster and we're gonna go through it as a b c d this is hero general tier list i'm counting all from my vast knowledge um and my opinions on the heroes and the current state what they bring to the table how useful they are how often they're seen in the current meta and you know try to be unbiased as possible so for example raid mode is not the de facto mode if you are a viewer and you're like raid mode is the the, the indicative of the power levels of the heroes I'm sorry this is not for you but I account for all the competitive modes and all the top metas etc I've been there I've done that boys I've been doing this for a long time you guys have been here with me throughout that entire time so I thank you very much so let's get right into it so um, we're gonna be going through tiers okay so D C B A S there's a lot of movement there's typically there's not a lot of movement um, there is quite a bit of movement in my opinions have changed quite a bit on some of these heroes so D rank boys you cannot have D and you guys know what I'm about to say without Daniel boys <laughs> with that dude like he he needs he needs a can I rework why can't I say nothing has changed beginning character he's literally just meat shield okay he used to be god tier arena way back in the day most of you guys don't they, they, you guys that didn't play around that time but he is being the most power cramped um not very useful very memeable and d for daniel for a very good reason um and he needs a rework boys um and yeah he's just, just don't 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 love him up don't love him up man um and then the next one is gonna be another mainstay down here in the d tier is gonna be ophelia if i can find her ophelia is definitely gonna be needing a kanak rework boys i'm pretty sure like like awesome peace has a a to-do board and it's like the next heroes to rework daniel and freaking ophelia is on there i'm telling you right now ophelia is definitely on it um sure her character design is too good to not have to, like she it, it's just it feels so bad for like it's just the design is it's it's a it's a favorite right a lot of people like her design and then they they like look around and they try her and everyone says she's trash right so that is very not good and i she is in due for a canak treatment for sure um it's just her damage is too low there this it's her design philosophy they're trying to do like this anti-carry thing but the thing it like canak was the same way it is very similar um but her like function her design philosophy doesn't match with what king god castle currently is and it's just it doesn't work it freaking doesn't work I'm sorry. I'm sorry. She needs she needs a complete rework, in my opinion. I'm sorry for the person who designed her, <laughs> but uh, that is actually it for D tier this time around. Very interest, interesting, right? I wonder who left. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go C tier. Okay, so C tier. So we are actually getting. So just to be clear, D tier is actually like don't they can't do much like at all yes you can make them work in some way you can make any hero in king god castle freaking work in some way or fashion this is not that kind of tier list i'm just saying if you're d tier you are underperforming out the wazoo and can't do much all right that, that that's all I'm, that, that i gotta be clear i gotta be clear c tier okay they are doable they also are sometimes meta in certain comps and they are irreplaceable in some comps and they function very well but in this grand scope of thing now this is very important this is this is the part that's really hard to get uh you know your head around in the grand scheme of things the perspective all right everything we're literally counting tower of trials 
Raid mode, strive mode, arena, invasion, invasion season one, season two, a great rift, literally everything. All the meta comps, all the comps possible, what's typically used and what is currently used in today's time frame. So that is the hard part. All right. So are you guys following me? So C tier. First one is going to be Alboron. Now, C tier is not going to change too much from the last time if I remember. So Alboron, he is a hero lot character that you actually start off with very good. And all he does is heal. And his special thing is that he can overheal. So when you overheal with Alboron, you get a shield, right? Very cool. Very meta in raids or any time you need healing, he is there and you pair him up with Bardry and then he goes crazy uh healing right and he's used for comps in like tower trials you can do that like you know the the holy combo you know with taesan and stuff you can do wacky stuff like that but in terms of what he actually brings which is healing right just straight heals um he has a place but it's not crazy good and i, I have to stress this again in the grand scheme of things right so because of just heals like literally just heals and you i mean you see him in raid modes to keep them keep your units alive like mage boss or something or whatever like blacksmith i, I don't know like freaking blood you know whatever you name it right but he is quote unquote meta but that doesn't mean that, that he's s tier because of that and plus he's a hero lock doesn't mean he's an s tier for that we're out of like like i like i said again a lot of the, the we're out of the time frame and out of the era where if you're a hero lock you're s tier right we, we we don't do that anymore boys we don't do that anymore it is uh it, it, at least for me okay I don't, I don't consider that um all right so that is aberon okay heals man <laughs> is what i call him next one's gonna be draco draco he got a lot of buffs but it's just he does damage okay like like i said draco can you, you can do chapter freaking 10 phase 15 whatever you can make him work no knob he's b tier perspective in the overall grand scheme of things i have to say this again comparatively to all the other heroes he is lacking i mean i'm a draco fan okay i am a draco fan so there's a lot of history a lot of i mean i can do a a history video on each of these freaking characters man that'd be a, that'd be a video idea in the future that'd be pretty cool like a like a lore you know a draco lore you know back in the day uh but that'd be fun uh, but he originally is a mainly a arena hero okay boys arena hero back in the duh um, and then the arena changed. He got pushed out of the meta. I mean, uh, it, that's long story short. He got pushed out of the meta, and then you typically don't use Draco for literally anything else. Literally. I mean, you can do, like I said, you can do invasion stuff for him, but he's not going to be the best, right? I mean, but that doesn't mean he's B tier, right? Just comparatively um and he's been lacking he's been lacking i think he needs a little bit of a kit change possibly in awakenings or something like that um and he's just one of those heroes that needs a little bit of a, a tweak a tweak in his mechanics in my opinion uh basically one of the older heroes right um so c tier next one's gonna be like uh, another hero long character very another very old hero a very legacy hero um he is basically just used as a hero lock character and two as a support unit slot in grand arena buff and that is literally all you use him for right now um it, it's bad it, i mean it's it, it feels a little sad because i'm actually kind of like a like a design fan like he's like you know he transforms into a freaking wolf right like yeah it's very cool i want to i want them to expand on him he need he's one of these older okay so old heroes needs changes <laughs> basically all right like he's like jaco old hero needs changes old hero needs changes and I, I can't you know like i don't know what else to say man i don't know what else to say so he's either arena grand arena grand arena uh support unit um or uh hero lock and that's basically all he's really used for um next one on the list is gonna be nabella now there are a lot of nabella fans yes yeah, she can do invasion or whatever you can make her work but uh, my I issue with her is that 
I mean, she was pretty good at the beginning, like pretty oppressive in Arena when she was first released around the the giant meta around when she was released. And then um, she just kind of fell off and then Kirdan got released. And then there's a lot more heroes that came around around that time. And then my issue with her is that her kit is the same thing as other heroes that do it way better. And there's like no reason to pick her. I mean, and the other reason is that you just like the character design. That That is literally the only reason, in my opinion. Her kit is too similar to what the top of the top, what they do really well. And she just does it a, a bit, you know, I mean, I say a bit, you know, uh, but she does it worse, right? And her kit needs to be, there's needs to be more identity into her kit it needs to be more sandstormy maybe like a add a dot to it or something like i don't freaking know um but she needs another tweak in her kit to give her some more unique personality yeah she has the wind and stuff but i mean come on let's be honest um next one is gonna be zupiter zupiter is an uh i love one of those legacy old heroes and she does a lot of damage yeah now nah, you can put you can put a tier three bows with 80 percent execute guess what my argument is that you can get those same items and put it on someone else and they could be s tier right but her damage is you know it is zupiter damage she Zupiter was reigning for a very long time in Arena, and she's been power crept. And that's that that that's all I got for you, boys. That's all I got for you. Uh, she needs another tweak in her kit to give her some more some more oomph. For example, right? I mean, I mean, I I think currently Awesome Piece is dealing with her by just upping her damage. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, I mean, you can up the damage, but. You know what I'm saying? Uh, there's only so much you can do when you just up the damage, right? So uh, another old hero needs a little more tweaks, but currently I think they're just going to stick with the whole upping the damage thing. Um, and then the next one, uh, new to the C tier, Leo, my boy Leo, a starting tank that you start off with. Uh, I used it for my back in the day. Armas gang, very classic. Meat shield. Now the only relevancy that he has really in the current, I mean, and I say this is this is just in game, end all be all max level, right? Um, he is mainly just used as like an arena beefy tank that that can delay the enemy from getting to your backline right and, and or you see him when there's a giant meta right in like arena right um otherwise you don't see this guy i mean in great rift if you see him if i see him in great rift and he's the only front line i pick him up like he's a solid meat shield right but other than that i feel like his awakenings need to be kind of changed give him i they need to give some of these tanks the older one like he's like he's 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 like og one of the og tanks okay boys um they need to give him like a, these these og tanks uh some other ability to give him to give them a little more of the identity now you know to be fair he's like a you know like a starting tank but shilda is also a starting tank and she has a hella good identity right so i don't know in the future but right now he is solid tank uh doesn't really do much uh he's great because he when he does his skill he can actually stun the frontline unit um in a like a like a colonel ish area right so he's pretty good in that giant metas is what you see him in arena mainly right so c tier um that is it for the c tier we're gonna go for b tier so b tier is gonna be the most dense <laughs> heroes uh on this list we're, there's a lot of freaking heroes i'm gonna be putting in b tier boys that's usually the case and b tier i need to stress that b tier heroes are all like the middle line like good like good like meta picks in here maybe in different seasons they might be super meta pick a lot of these heroes might uh, i'll state it a b plus but we're not doing any b plus or any middle tiers right so um i'll state it but some like a, a b tier doesn't mean they're trash okay boys they can do chapter builds they're meta in some but like overall there's just like middle of the road depending on they're really good right like i can pick them they can perform form and they're just b tier b tier is pretty good right like b tier from my list is pretty good not trash boys okay all because it's b tier it ain't trash so the first one is going to be as usual priya now priya 
a lot of freaking spell power. Her base spell power is pretty good. She has a lot of strategic value in her uh, awakening to the frozen armor. Um, and there's a lot of fun builds you can do with her. A very large AoE stun and stun lock comps and feels pretty good. Um, Paro or Bardry, you can do insta stun stuff like TP Priya and Arena is pretty fun. Um, and she's a solid hero. Like her identity and her strategic value in some of her kit is very good and very useful in some modes um is it going to be your evasion farmer no it's more of eh, i mean uh, yeah, she can do stuff okay she can do stuff and very relevant and has an identity to keep her around right like if i'm making a team comp and i'm like i need something the like she provides um a strategic perspective or an angle that I might consider putting her on my team for, right? So because of that, her value goes up and that is why she's B tier personally for me, um, but pretty good. Uh, next one's gonna be Agath, probably like the, if you if you want like a straight tank, beefy team wide damage mitigation, Agath is your girl and she is great. One of my favorite tanks, the de facto tank to be honest with you um and like I, I put her in great rift if i want if you want team wide damage mitigation if you can like if you want to heal her up like for example you can pair her up with a bargery with alberon and then boom you have the trifecta and you have a lot of damage mitigation with healing and you can't die right and th those are some cool team comps and she is i just just think i mean her awakening to needs to be reworked but everyone uses everyone uses awakening one okay no one ever uses freaking awakening two awakening two needs to be freaking reworked man um old design uh old philosophy in my opinion uh she is in my opinion a little bit on the older design side like the newer heroes uh they've gotten a lot better with it uh, they really need to go back and kind of retweak some of these uh, awakenings for sure um next one is going to be isaac another oh yeah by the way agath is a hero lock character now and isaac is a hero lock character now isaac is another uh support unit uh isaac has a lot of damage she chains units and a lot of people don't really they kind of underestimate isaac damage I isaac damage is a lot of freaking damage you can transfer stuns and like uh she is pretty key in uh stunlock comps and things like that and her chain priorities will always chain to the highest priority on the enemy team so like the, the person that you like so it's like smart targeting right so they the targeting system for her is very good and it'll always target like the one that you want right and it's very annoying to fight against <laughs> for sure um so she is very useful very good utility very high okay a lot of people will put her in c but her utility is so good and part of king god castle is team building and team synergy and how you build your team there i feel like in this day and age there's a lot of that uh, it's gotten a lot better i'll tell you that um, but the team building theorizing part like theory crafting uh, i i personally love to do it if you guys have been following my channel you guys know that i love to do that and creating metas and things like that i am a, that type of person and a lot of people just like to do insignia mass single so single carry right i mean that's cool and all but there's more depth to it than meets the eye and utility in this game as you play it more, you start to understand it more. And any hero that can uh, give that type of utility that no other hero can't, um, their value rises up, right? And Isaac is one of those units. I, I, you know, like uh, she is pretty underrated. She used to be pretty bad. Uh, to, to be fair, but then she got uh, some buffs and changes and then awakenings and things like that. So she got progressively better. Uh, pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. Next one, Baldir is the Deer Bear Man. <laughs> and he's middle of the road, man. My argument is him. Like, I really don't like his bear form. I think his bear form kit needs to be changed. And I believe that uh, he, his deer form is great. He has good damage. He, his, his archetype is pretty unique, uh, but I don't like his bear form mechanics. He was used in arena for that one time, but I, I don't think because he was used in arena that one time, I mean, to be honest, he wasn't that effective in that cop, to be honest with you, like completely honest, but I mean, he is middle of the road, man. I, I don't think he's gonna ever gonna be S because they'll always be balancing this, this this these two forms that he has. So I think he is middle of the road. I, he can get stuff done and he's pretty unique, right? Um, 
I, I don't know what else to say. I don't know what to say. Baldir. Uh, next one is going to be Behemoth. I love Behemoth. Um, Behemoth Gang. Um, I wish they didn't change that his shield. It was they, they changed him to where his shield is based off of his spell power rather than his damage. And I and I, I want them to revert it back. I don't know. I haven't really been spamming Behemoths um, that often lately. But I every time I do... After that change, it feels a lot worse, um, and I wish they would revert it. Um, since they changed it, he's like B tier. Like before, he's like B plus, but like B tier. I think Behemoth's Gang. It is a solid comp that you need to know exists for the future. Um, but Behemoth's Gang is very fun. I like it. It's one of my favorite comps. Uh, he is pretty B tier now. He's solid B. In the past, he would be B plus, but solid B. Um, Insta Sun, you know, you do like 10 mage or something, and he like, you know, jumps on top of each other. And uh, the higher tier that he gets, the more AoE, um, you know, covers that he gets. And it's like a chain effect, right? Um, and that's what you play him for. So he's pretty solid B right now. Uh, I, I would say a bit weaker than what he was once was. Um, and then we have the next one, Kane. So he has a unique mechanic where he can actually uh, farm you item pieces. And he's the only hero in the game that can do that. And because of that, he is B tier. There is, I mean, use this in raid mode that, I mean, like, you know, you'll have guys that will tell you Kane is S tier because you use them in raids and you can like farm items with you. And again, raid mode is not indicative of the entire power level of the game, in my opinion. And because he is used for items, a very unique mechanic, very useful, very useful to utilize, he is B tier. As a carry, I love Kane, okay? I, I'm a Kane Arena user back in the day and like i have a lot of issues with him as a carry they buffed him a bit and things like that he feels a lot better but he needs he needs to be there's more things to address and he is uh he's he's b man he's b i mean yeah he can farm items for you but he's not freaking a tier because of that man he is b ah uh, i mean i don't know what else to say i don't know what else to say you typically use him for item farming raid mode in particular and you can do you can do the cane strike thing i was never on that train boys i was never on that train i don't think it's that effective and i don't see why you would do it uh because of other reasons but i that, that's about it that's about it uh item farming man and then we have kathy so kathy very impressive back in the day and with dwarven scope she feels really good and she she's not like crazy she's not crazy crazy right um and i feel like she is like a bb plus okay bb plus is what i'll give her depending but she's definitely not like as like and now like it, it's kind of funny because i'm moving things from s and a and then i have to compare it to the rest and within the tier right and she is definitely b tier um comparatively for sure um very good damage dealer dwarven scope is pretty much what you see her with and you kind of see dwarven scope kathy and arena all the time um you can do i mean i i i, I love playing kathy as well so i mean you can do like invasion with her but other than that i mean great rift i guess uh but that's about it uh next one on the list is going to be chunga chunga is one of those old heroes that are on the rise I've always thought that her awakenings need to be changed, um, and I still believe that, by the way. And I think if they revamped her awakenings to be something better, she has potential to be even up here, like up, up, up here, possibly, right? And she feels really good right now. I, I mean, I, I can't believe I'm saying this. I mean, like back in the, back in the day, Chunga was like the the de facto like carry, right? She was like the Evan or the Kira Dan. She was like that. And then power creep, you know, power creep happened and then they buffed her and then she kind of like started rising up. And she, I, I'd say like B, B, maybe B plus, maybe, oh, B plus a little too much, maybe B. So B right now, they revamped her awakenings. Uh, my issue was always her awakenings change your awakenings please uh but i do like the character a lot uh she's pretty solid um you typically see her you can see her in stripe battlefield um i think she has a place uh definitely not in the current meta but uh in another meta maybe 
but people typically like do invasion farming with her um but i mean it's not gonna be the best uh, but it is possible um cool character you know cool character next one is gonna be good neil good neil is a b hero after awakening okay so he is a trash hero if you don't have an awakening you're like nah uh i got him and he's not awakened he's like why is he so bad i go up i hate to tell you it's because he is so if he is not awakened okay pre-awakening he is f tier probably the worst character in the game um because all he does is punch <laughs> literally punch and he does a skill and then cool right he is good because once he is awakened, he can actually share his spell shield, which is the reason why you use Gidneel. Now, because of that alone, he is B tier. Okay, I have to I have to kind of like address this every time. Um, and his spell shield sharing effect is insanely strong but like he is meta in like raid mode builds and like tower of trials very key and very good one slot support and strife literally any mode okay um and i just can't put him any higher than b it, because literally spell shield is the op thing well isn't it okay it used to be freaking op and then like the kind of mighty blocks happen and things like that so is it, the value of spell shield is not like insanely insane high like i'll give you b plus maybe if you're doing that but i mean so b plus is like b right so that is how i feel about good nail so that is purely the reason why right spell shield sharing um next one on the list is going to be joel joel is an interesting one similar to chunga uh, a very old legacy hero uh buffs 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 and then uh he's like a budget kirdan that's the joke that i always make because they're it's kind of similar um and he you get him for free right through the beginner quest or whatever right um and he's pretty solid I, I, he's he's solid what can i say he's solid I also think he needs some awakening changes to be honest with you he's one of those legacy heroes that needs awakening changes because you know like when they first released awakening here uh awakening abilities back in the day and then you know all the old heroes got awakening abilities and then you know things change over time and they they definitely need to like you know give us another give us another awakening <laughs> level 30 uh ascension is uh ascension levels is what i always joke around about <laughs> but um yeah about b tier i i mean i'll give him b tier i can't put him any higher i think he's pretty solid i don't think he's c tier definitely not in the past he was uh next one is gonna be mercil mercil is uh was god tier in arena before grand arena came out uh and then she just kind of less relevant and mainly you use her for damage boosting and raids or whatever that you need um and you use her for cc immunity for her from her awakening um and she does give you heals mercil's healing is healing over time so like some tick based healing uh but it doesn't give you over healing it doesn't do shields like alberon that's the main difference uh, so like a druid for example right so those are what you really use her for she's more of a supportive role nowadays um and she used to be super op in arena right like i mean i i i mean i mean i kind of miss those days but uh she's more of a supportive role nowadays damage boosting cc immunity um less about the heals to be honest with you is more about the damage boosting and cc immunity nowadays and the, but the effects are very good and good enough to bb uh next one is gonna be rosette rosette is an interesting old hero okay i mean quote unquote older hero right um and she brings mainly damage boosting and they buffed her to where she actually feels good by herself um her her speed casting the, you know she got the zalbai treatment where it is scaled on attack speed and things like that her execution damage and then her damage reduction like kind of mechanics um she's a super solid tank and also uh brings that damage boosting right and but mainly a lot of people use her for that damage boosting ability um for like raid or or what have you right like a great rift if you see her you're gonna be uh taking her up um very good for damage boosting um and next one on the list is going to be tay back now tay back um you don't see him as often anymore mainly an arena hero okay so anything competitive 
uh, arena facing another player or facing a monster or something like that if you awakening two never use awakening one okay you have to have them waking kind of similar to the dealio with um Gidneo. before awakening tayback is freaking trash okay you don't use tayback for t like the only thing you use them for is awakening two make him cast as soon as possible ideally beginning of round and that is why you use tape back boys and that effect in itself will define comps and and it's just a very unique oppressive mechanic idea that it, it it's value at b like just because of that is value at b that is why you see tayback a, a higher on the tier list as like like for a new player coming in you're like you get tayback and you're like this guy's trash right why is he even b tier right and that is why um it used to be very oppressive they actually nerfed it quite a bit and it is because of the meta and things like that it is still like this effect is still being used in arena for sure um because it's taunting players and he can't die and things like that like imagine him activating at the in your back line taunting the enemies and the enemies actually have to walk to you that in itself is very strong so tayback b tier i believe he stays there from the last time as well um next one's gonna be yan yan another old hero got a lot of buff damages uh she's right above my head uh and she feels really good her damage is very good uh you don't really i mean you, it's damage and healing at the same time and that is like her draw right and her burst damage and things like that um feels really good now right um so she is b tier like she doesn't she used to be like freaking c tier but they buffed her and she's really good she's she feels really solid one of those older heroes i do think her awakenings need to be revet a lot of the older heroes i feel like i feel that way where their their awakenings need to be changed but her damage and her performance wise she has a place in a in like she has a comp and things like that that can perform right so she's pretty good b tier next one is going to be shelda 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 so tank that you start off with um very good identity where she is generating mighty blocks when she does her ability um specifically with awakening one okay like if you don't have her awakening she's just going to be generating a shield but her identity is that she can do um generate her own mighty blocks uh, with awakening one and that's her identity as a tank right so i wish some of these other older tanks kind of had like that kind of that little unique identity like leo kind of needs something a little more oomph right um something like that but shout out very solid tank um if you are starting out and if you want a tank i would recommend investing in shelda and then like awaiting wait awakening her and then keep her at level 16 but if you are looking for a tank at early on and you want uh, a tank that you want to awaken shelda is a pretty solid choice um so that it, she's used very useful as i'll say so, like she's a tank but also it has some utility in a tank that can generate all mighty blocks, right? And that in itself has a lot of synergies with some other things that exist in the game. Uh, next one is going to be Elizabeth, one of the newer heroes. Um, Elizabeth is a very strong, unique uh, tank and she is a void stacker is what I like to say. So there's a relic called void a perpetual void and pretty much uh, when units die your team gets buffed okay in short short and simple units die um your units teammates uh you get your team gets buffed and her thing is that she can summon uh little golems and those can die and and stack up your your perpetual void relic right and usually you can't trigger your your units on death and it will count towards the stack so she has a unique mechanic where when she does her ability um she can automatically trigger that that the death effect right and then it will trigger stacking she can void stack in herself for example so that is unique to her no other hero can really do that other heroes that can summon things on the board they have to actually have that unit die 
um, and it won't trigger when they recast it, for example, if that makes sense and if you're following me. She's also pretty good because uh, she has like this unique taunt uh, baked into her kit, which is very strong, by the way. And, but the only negative thing that I have about her in the current patch is that ever since she was released, she is a 50% mana starter. She needs to be 100%. If she was 100% mana start, yeah, you can like offset this by like relics or, or freaking altars, but I don't want to do that, right? I don't want to do that. So she is naturally a 50% mana starter and it feels a bit bad. So if she was ever changed to a 100% mana start, I wish she did. I mean, it'd be kind of broken to be honest with you. She'd be like A tier for sure. I would put her in A tier if she's 100% mana start, but she's 50% mana start and because of that, she's like B tier, but she's pretty staple. Whenever you think of, I mean, whenever you think of Void Relic, you think of like three freaking heroes, right? And she is one of those heroes and it's just natural that she's really good and she's very staple in raid mode, for example, like Blacksmith Boss or whatever. She She's very staple in those contexts, right? Um, but in terms of like what she brings and, and things like that and like my personally issues with her and I think she's B tier. Um, as a void sacker, like B, B plus, maybe, but like B tier, right? Um, next one's gonna be Evan. Evan has fallen. She, he is uh, one of the uh, one of the favorites, you know, uh, one of the favorites of uh, farming. But uh, he is falling off very hard. And power creep. Um, he's one of the two carry heroes that you start off with. Usually, it's Evan or Armas. Evan or Armas, right? And it's like Evan out of the two. I would still, I would say Evan but you're gonna want to pivot like we're in the day and age where you can't you don't start off with one of the best carry units that will take you throughout all of invasion right we're out of that era boys you actually need to rely on gotcha or something else to get a, another carry unit that can carry through through the rest of the game um so there's not that option anymore but through chapters one to ten evan would probably be your best bet um but comparatively he's like b tier right like he's He's, he's down there now. He's down there now. There's a lot of heroes in the game. Uh, next one is going to be, speaking of the devil, Armas. Armas, he used to be C, in my opinion, but then Dwarven Skull came out, and he feels a lot better, right? Just overall. Um, and they buffed him, and he could, you know, he's on par with Evan, I'd say, uh, to be honest with you. So, you know, Armas gang, you know? I I, I, I want to see more buffs to Armas, you know, like, or something. Um... Yeah, he feels he's he feels hot. He's, he doesn't feel like a C tier hero. Uh, definitely with Dwarven Scope, it it moved up a lot of uh, these range heroes that used to be kind of lower on my list for sure. Uh, next one is going to be Hanzi. Speaking of the devil, uh, she used to be C tier for me. Ramping hero has a lot of issues, but with Dwarven Scope, she feels a lot better. And I feel comfortable enough to put her in B tier, right? Um, Dwarven Scope and. I don't know what to say. Ramping hero uh, still has a lot of issues, in my opinion. <sighs> uh, yeah, I'll give her B tier. I'll give you B tier. Hanzi fans, be Hanzi fans. You guys can be happy. Uh, I'll give her B tier. It feels a lot better. It feels kind of bad that to put her in C, to be honest, because I feel like like she's actually not that bad. She's actually not that bad. Not 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 with these other heroes. I don't think so. Um, they, they, she has a place, is what I'll say. All right, next one on the list is going to be a new one. She moved up hella hella fans. Hella fans, be happy with her recent buff. They buffed her spell power, so they gave her more damage. She feels pretty good. Like she feels, she, you know. But to be honest, I want her. You should. They should. They should buff it like another twenty five percent. <laughs> but she is still lacking like a defensive thing like give her back her health like more health um and she just it's because she has to cast she doesn't auto attack she's very unique um and i don't know i feel like her awakenings need to be she's one of those heroes of old that needs to be re-looked at in terms of awakenings for sure um i feel like they need to up her spell power like 25 more percent and then um they need to give her some more health uh give her back some more health she, she got nerfed in the past she used to be very oppressive by the way and um they tried to nerf uh buff her again and they need to buff her a bit more but she feels a lot more solid now uh to be honest and you know she or she, she has a unique mechanic where she doesn't auto attack if you don't know and her potential aid ability allows her to reduce her cast time to 1.5 seconds and that's the cap right and yeah I, she 
she just needs more buff but she is better now so that is good that is good uptrend next one is gonna be a new one i'm moving him down hey dog now hey dog has fallen off yeah he's like you use him for greed boss to remove like stun stacks or and he's op in arena um and the thing is arena is so volatile that he you see him a bit less he used to be less oppressive because all the other crap that is in the game now <laughs> like there's so much oppressive stuff than than Herang right now um and I would say it it was a different era and now it, there's a new era <laughs> of oppressive things so he used to be he, his stuns are if you want stuns you pair him up with Bardry you you got you got aoe stuns right he is still stun man but as of right now he is seen a bit less for sure because of the rest of the crap that it's in the game and i feel comfortable putting him in b um or b plus for example right so he's in b right b b plus is what i'll give him now um and it just felt a little bad to put him in a because he he's definitely fallen off a bit uh, because not because of he himself uh, but because of the state of the game and the rest of the things that exist so b tier Heidong. um next one's gonna be naria another new one i moved her down very similar but she is she has really good scaling a lot less relevant now but she's still very strong um you can still do the great the great riff stuff right um you can still do the arena stuff like people will still put a pocket uh naria in the back with a uh, void relic for example um and she she is single target like her issues is that she is strong in single target um and her awakenings need to be adjusted as well in my opinion her awakening one in particular i like her awakening too the invisible one um but she needs an aoe kind of like a ricochet <laughs> maybe that'll be too much uh but her identity needs like her it's single target right so yeah she's still really good b plus is what i'll give her uh but new to uh the tier she has moved down all right i think that is it for b tier now for a tier so a tier to start us off is going to be taesan so taesan is one of the better tanks in the game for sure he has a unique mechanic where he is not only cc guy he um builds armor and his damage is based on armor right and he can stun the like 10 mage he's 10 mage man and he just he's he's good he's freaking good one of the better tanks in the game for sure a lot of freaking utility and unique unique mechanic to him and his functions so very good tank damage hybrid there's not many of those in this game next one eight here is gonna be zalbai the lightning god now zalbai is a fan favorite um i can't give him s tier man i i know he's a favorite he's the he's the virgil sephiroth of king god castle i get it i freaking get it um he's cool okay he's anime man sword samurai guy goes around teleports does a lot of damage one of the best skins in the game um he used to be very oppressive and they nerfed him a lot and they're trying to bring him back up and they gave him back his damage um but they didn't really give him his durability and his durability is the issue he's super glass cannon um but he can be oppressive and i acknowledge his strength okay so a tier but is he s tier no if they gave him his durability more health maybe s tier we'll see we'll see but that hasn't happened yet and he's kind of like teeter tottering this very hard balance this line this balance right here that they're trying to um adjust so if they give them his health he might be too op and stuff like that so we'll see but a tier for me very much a fan favorite next one is gonna be another tank hero lock lily one of the better tanks in the game for sure uh, she is a straight tank she has a unique mechanic that she's on uh, she has essentially two health bars. She is on Shasha. When she dies, she unmounts. So it's like this unmount mounting effect. Very key for uh, if you're wanting a tank for chapter 10. Um, but even then, she, her unmounting and mounting effect is very unique. Very good tank. She has a stun baked into her awakening. Very good. Super solid. One of the better tanks in the game. 
for sure. Next one, A tier is gonna be Mara. Mara is very good. I used to put her in S tier at one point in my list and it felt really bad because I'm comparing it to some other S tiers that I would consider and it just felt bad so I moved her down now. She is so prevalent. Whenever you see Void Relic, you see Mara and her kit is very strong. She stuns the target. If you're using the illusion one, which many people do when, if you're using Void Relic, you'll make a copy um, and you generate a mighty block on yourself. Yeah, it's pretty freaking good, bro. Um, and then on top of that, you can use her as a damage booster and raise with Awakening 1, right? Uh, like she has a damage boosting thing uh, baked into her kit as well. And she is super solid, man. As you see her literally everywhere, round one hero typically in arena and very prevalent very strong in my opinion so a tier uh for that one she is a void stacker for sure with a lot of good utility um effects caked in uh next one is going to be tia blacksmith tia i think she is one of the better range carries in the game for sure um specifically for great riv blacksmith she is my favorite she does a lot of damage and she has a unique mechanic that other range carries do not have is where she can actually she's she's mobile whenever a hero goes next to her she can leap back and move around the freaking map that is a very unique mechanic she, she can end up in the enemy corner if you like chase her far enough and not many people can end up in the enemy corner and that is she has like a april fool's meme based on her she, she is the de facto um chick poster chick of great red blacksmith builds it, and she she does a lot of damage as well so she's like b plus plus for me i mean if i'm being honest she would be like b plus plus because it kind of feels a little bad to put her name I'll be honest, but B plus plus, you know, I'll, I'll say it here, but I'll make people happy and put, put her in a, <laughs> because uh, I mean, great riff blacksmith Tia is like so iconic that I have to, I have to give it, I have to give it to her, man. I have to give it to her. Um, next one is going to be Estia. Estia has so much utility baked in her kit with damage, um, knockback, uh, freaking heals shields uh pushback for her team and and all of this stuff she can get really oppressive and is very hard to deal with and borderline broken in my opinion and very good one slot support you don't even need to use her as a carry but if you want to use her a carry she has the damage and burst and it's pretty oppressive so very good don't sleep on Estia. she is very good um the next one is gonna be in wrath uh in wrath scales off of no items uh he used to be s tier for me because uh before season two invasion but now with the new season of invasion season uh two with chapter 11 and 12 uh he can't really do that as brain dead anymore for sure and he's fallen off a bit but he is still very meta in like uh, arena and and things like that he's very good uh, early round hero um and he has a unique mechanic that he scales off enough freaking items right so and he has the the latest skin the chef in skin is so good man i love that freaking skin but he is definitely a tier for me very unique mechanic i do maybe he'll come around in evasion season two but he's so brand dead it hurts so if you are unsure if you know if you're like a player that's like always confused about what items to put on your heroes play in wrath he scales off of no items you don't you don't need to put items on him he scales off of no items so he's a pretty good hero um and yeah yeah solid solid uh i, I do love me an in wrath next one's gonna be bomby now bomby is a tier for me dwarven scope is like he's got the dwarven scope effect very good with dwarven scope um and he i'm a bomby fan okay i'm a bomby fan i think like it's it's 10 mage make him uh start at round place him anywhere there's a lot of pathing and things that you can there's a lot of strategic value i don't know what else to say there's a lot of, i'm a bomby fan i've been playing bomby for a while and like very long time he has a lot of like strategic value right and i'll give it to you that he's like b plus <laughs> plus if i'm being honest b very similar to tia but there's a place in my heart that i want to place him in a right and with dwarven scope he is very strong with dwarven scope 
um, and he, he just has a placement. He's definitely one of the better range heroes in the game, and I feel bad if I put one of the better range heroes in the game in B tier, so A tier is where he goes. B++ is probably my true ranking for him, but a tier he goes next one a tier is going to be the newest god tier skin hero is going to be ren now ren is still very good um less prevalent in strive battlefield for sure but she can get stuff done generate her generates her almighty block uh probably one of my favorite skin god tier skins in the game um i i just love the effect the left the effect is so crazy it's so freaking good man the skin is s tier bro um but she is definitely a tier um i don't feel comfortable putting her in s tier um she's a ramping kind of unit very good generates her own mighty block aoe where second awakening is very good i feel like her awakening one needs to be revamped 1000 percent um you can do her entire trials as well as a newbie player uh, like a level eight ren can um get through that pretty good pretty good um and yeah like what can i say very strong hero i don't think she's s tier uh, I don't think she's S tier in this patch. Uh, so very good hero, A tier for me. Next one is gonna be Rahawk. Rahawk, the rise of Rahawk. <laughs> the attack speed slow Rahawk. Uh, he has a lot of damage too if you wanna use him as damage, but typically you use him for the attack speed slow um, as a utility unit and the damage boosting. So he, he does damage boosting and attacks to be slow at the same time. With Awakening 1, he applies it to two units. Um, so that is very strong. Used a lot right now in the meta and for various things you've seen in raids for damage boosting, things like that. Um, and very good utility and that is why he's a tier can't believe i'm saying because he used to be freaking cannot the old cannot tier <laughs> uh he used to be like that and he just rose up oh, what can i say he rose up next one is going to be zhao yun now zhao yun one of my favorite heroes in the game i put him in b tier last time and because he is a tier because dwarven scope chapter 12 okay invasion to uh, freaking 2 2 or whatever you want to call it because of that that he's meta in freaking uh, invasion farming, which is kind of insane to me. Dwarven Scope, Zhao Yun, Chapter 12. Because of that, he's A tier. Yeah, I mean, like, he's he's raid mode, raid mode meta as well. Um, that's that I'm considering that as well. Um, he's all, there might be a little biased because he's one of my favorite heroes. I'm glad to see that he's up there, but he is the de facto Chapter 12 farming right now, and I can't, I gotta put him in A, man. I gotta put him in A. Next one is gonna be Victoria. She moved down from S. I think she's falling off, man. I know there's like that level eight Victoria knob. I mean, you guys can do that level eight Victoria. I don't know who's, <laughs> I don't, you know, I'm I'm over that, bro. I'm over that. I but I do acknowledge that she has a lot of freaking damage early on levels for no freaking reason, and she's very oppressive in arena. Um, but I feel like there are a lot of options now to get around that Victoria shenanigans and a lot more uh, players are being more used to getting around that but Victoria is still oppressive don't get me wrong but I feel like with other things in the mix she has fallen off some and to be honest I'm not that big of a Victoria fan myself I've never been um, but I think she is A tier now. I don't think she's S tier anymore. Um, and it's, it's interesting to see. There's a lot of changes in this list. Um, I think she feels pretty good in A tier for me. Um, next one is going to be... I'm going to put him here, man. I'm going to put him here. Pharrell. Now, Pharrell got nerfed. Uh, he got reduced spell power, which I definitely feel. I definitely feel it. Um, but if I want a range caster, and by the way, Pharrell is the reason why I feel so negatively by, um, with Hella, by the way, I think he does the same thing that Hella tries to do, but even better. Um, but Pharrell, he got nerfed, his spell power got nerfed, and I feel like, I feel like they should give it back to him, man. I, I honestly do. Uh, and... He feels, he still feels pretty good. He still feels pretty good, but it just feels bad that I know what he used to feel like. And there are better, there are, so like, like when I think of damage dealing caster, like I don't think of Pharrell all the time now. 
for example. So because of that, he uh, he moved down for me, right? Um, and, but I still feel like he's very strong. He has a hella long range, still does a lot of damage, and he can clear stuff. And I think he's he'll still be around, right? I don't think he's as oppressive in arena as much anymore. But you know, I think he's still pretty solid. Uh, a tier for now. You know, we can always revisit this, right? Uh, it'll be interesting to see next tier list how I feel. Next one uh, is gonna be new to the man. There's a lot of freaking movement. <laughs> um, next one, I have, to, I had to do it, man. I am sorry, I am sorry, not sorry, but Ian is a tier for me. Yes, he has the scaling. Okay, there's not many heroes that have percent base scaling, and I've been putting him in S tier because of that fact, and because there's a special place in my heart for for Ian, um, <laughs> but. He is not seen around as much anymore because of the other things in the game. Um, and but he's still really strong. He's still raid meta, right? Like you can still do a lot of like the stacking, you know, buffers, and you do the mega damage in raids and things like that. And you just before you he was very very oppressive. Now there are more oppressive things in the game, and you see him less um, often around town. So. Um, yes, he is still raid meta, don't get me wrong, but you just don't see him like crazy in, in arena anymore. There's a much more crazy things in arena and things like that. Uh, and I, I, he's a tier, man. He, I have to move him in a tier. Um, and when I think of other percent base scaling heroes and like, I, and I'm trying to do something, I don't, I don't immediately think of Ian anymore. Right. Um, but yeah, don't get me wrong. He is raid, raid meta still, but all because he's raid meta doesn't mean he's S rank. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, what can I say? A tier Ian for this one, boys. Our next one is going to be the newest hero, Dandelin, the newest hero. I'm going to put her in A. She is not S tier for me. She is a tank that does damage with so much freaking utility baked into her kit. Now, she has a lot of unique stuff going on. And she is one of those newer heroes like like Pharrell, for example, with a new philosophy and designs of Austin Peace. You know, the, the, new, the new stuff coming out of the kitchen, for example. And she has so many, like, you... you utility baked into her she has a lot of identity character hero identities that that is taken from the uh, like uh, she has a damage she's a damage booster she has a stun uh her max hp steroid and things like that and um she a lot of people like her fan favorite what can i say and uh very memeable um i like her design i think she's a very strong hero but not s tier i don't think she's s tier not quite not quite um she is a straight tank at the end of the day but she has a lot of depth but her depth is borderline s it depends right like it it, it could be s but it's not it's not there it's not there in my opinion it's not there but she is very good very good one of the best quote unquote tanks in the game for sure in my opinion Pretty, pretty good effort by Awesome Peace in my, in, uh, in my opinion, for sure. Um, a tier is where she lands. All right. The next one on the list of A tier, the last one, is going to be the newest reworked Kanak. Now, now hear me out. Hear me out. As of the recording of this video, the newest season just started. Okay. As of the recording of this video, the newest season just started. The first week, by the way. Like, the newest season just started, like, freaking two days ago. Okay. Um... He is so strong um, and so strong that I am like, is is giving me like, I have to do a double take and reevaluate myself. Is he S tier? But I'll, because that is so early, I feel apprehensive, like a little bit, a little bit, you know, I don't feel like my, my gut instinct doesn't go straight to crazy S, right? So... I'll give you A plus. A plus is what I'll give it to you. He is very good. <laughs> very good right now. He is very good right now. Um, and he can do chapter 12. He is, I don't see him getting out of Strife Meta. I think, I think a lot of people, I have tried a lot of different comps so far in Strife Meta. I tried, I tried boys. I think Kanak is here to stay. I do see them, it's kind of funny to say, I do see them adjusting slash nerfing Kanak. 
<laughs> I do see them adjusting it. Um, there, there are some interactions that I feel like needs to be adjusted, and I feel like they will in the future. But as of right now, the recording of the video, he is like A++. He can do Chapter 12. He's Strife Meta. Um, uh, raid season hasn't started, but I will put money that he will do a lot of freaking damage in raid mode as well. Um, and I think he's around to stay, boys. I think Kanak, the Kanak God is here. Next tier list, he might be S. Who knows? But right now, he is A++. And because he's A++, I'm going to go the safer route and go A since it's so early. But... He is very good, boys. Don't sleep on the newest Kanak. He is very good. He is very good. And that is it for A tier. Now, S tier. Um, now, you can, you know, it's it's, it's just mainstays, right? Mainstays. Um, let's go the the Link Heroes first. He Link Heroes are here a lot of characters. If you are new to the game, um, Lunaire, Link, Link, Link. And the reason why they're Link is when they when you put these heroes on the board, um, they you have like a little UI visual UI effect that tells you who you're linking to. When they have skill, they will buff the Link hero. That is what Link's hero are. And then you can only have one Link hero on your team. So you can only have one of these, right? So why would you pick one over the other? Now, there's a lot of confusion with newer players of who is the best quote unquote best link hero for who hero there's a lot of nuance that why you would pick one link hero over the other and depends on mode depends on kit depends on hero it depends on a lot of stuff but what i can tell you in this video is generally what the 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 bullet points of why they are good and what are the differences are okay you guys ready you guys ready now like i said there's a lot of nuance to this so i'll leave you guys up to figure that out yourself and ask in the official discord but just know that there's a lot of confusion about who uses for what and exactly i can't I, I can only lay it out black and white for you guys just know that there's a lot of gray there's a lot of gray okay so lunar is the old the oldest link type hero then mono got released and Sadon got released so lunar buffs attack and spell power cool gives you some shield and gives you a uh, mighty block depending right cool mono buffs attack all right and then it gives you damage reduction specifically, okay? Damage reduction. Sedong buffs spell power, gives you some spell amp, and gives you mana. Another battery unit, the only other battery unit in the game besides um, Bardry, for example. Bardry is more team-wide and Sedong is like single target, essentially, right? Um, but that is the differences between the three. And another unique factor is that you can only have one link type hero attached to a hero when you're using mono in Sadon. You can only have one mono linked to a hero. You can't stack them. Unstackable. But Lunar, you can have multiple Lunars stacking onto one hero. And this is where, this is why you see Lunar a lot in raid mode paired with Mel, for example, or doing any like the dummy challenges or whatever. You get a lot of high tier uh, Lunares and then you pair it with Bardry with a scaling hero and then boom, you go to town. There's a lot of freaking damage, right? And that is why those are the differences, right? Th that's why they're used. So it's attack and spell power, attack with damage reduction um, and Sedong with uh, some mana and some spell amp and spell power and then Lunar you can stack it and and all that jazz right and that's the bullet points now it's not as black and white as oh my hero does spell damage so I should use the spell damage um, uh, link type hero Sedong right yes and no it depends on a lot of stuff so I'll leave you guys out to figure that out yourself I can only kind of generally tell you what the differences are and why they are kind of used but for the actual pairing I'll let you guys explore that yourself that's part of the fun so that is just something that you kind of understand over time and you kind of get more experience with the game and things like that. Just know that there's a lot of gray area and a lot of nuance. Uh, next one is going to be Bardry's uh, battery unit. Uh, the other, like the OG battery unit, team wide, very staple in literally every mode. Um, very useful. Um, I did enough said enough said next one's gonna be male scalable hero percent the very fan favorite uh she stays up here because attack speed uh, plus attack count she is so she's so staple and she's 
so soft. I mean, you're not gonna see her like invasion farming. She can do it, I guess. But um, but Mel, <laughs> Mel, she's been here forever. Okay, she's been here freaking forever. All right, raid meta um, used to be Shrive meta, uh, and she has very very good scaling. Um, uh, but she is more prevalent in my opinion than Ian in my opinion, um, at least for my usages. Okay. But she is up there and it's just mainstay. I it just feels bad if I put her any lower. And I mean, maybe one day she'll fall, but she is S rank for me. Uh, next one's gonna be Kirdan. Now, Kirdan, he did get quote unquote nerfed. Still feels really good. I feel like just his kit in general, just his kit is freaking S tier. Still 30 mana unit, uh, two auto attacks, CC immunity, uh, auto pathing. Scales off of attack speed and spell power. Um, what can I freaking say? A lot of damage. Um, the only thing is that they kind of nerfed him a little bit. He did get nerfed. But I still think it's enough for him to be like just his based on his kit in general. And he's still performing S tier. Very super solid. Uh, next one on the list is going to be uh, I'm going to put Rai. Okay, Rai. Raid meta um, and uh, stacking perpetual void uh, dolls. Um, you can do the strife battlefield rise stuff. Uh, I think it's still pretty solid in my opinion. I did try it. Still pretty solid. Not get, not gonna be the best, but still pretty solid. Um, you can do her arena and is very good there as well. Like perpetual void grenade shenanigans, a lot of damage. Ever since they changed her to scale off of attack speed. She's freaking godlike, um, and she is very strong. A lot of damage. I, 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 I don't know. It's, it's freaking S tier. The more I thought about it, she was A tier. I think she's S tier uh, based on her functionality, what she can do, what she can pump out, and how relevant she is, and how safe she is. Um, and she can be pretty oppressive. So S tier for me, Rai fans, be happy. Now the last one on the list, I'm gonna put Kata. Gonna put Kata. She got nerfed. She got nerfed. I feel invasion, boys. Evasion. Freaking evasion. Um, she with her introduction to the game of King Guard Castle, she introduced also a new defensive mechanic, evasion. Evasion is very strong. I think I still think she is still pretty freaking oppressive. No one else has evasion. It's her identity. Yeah, there's like a uh, her awakening two, and then you have like her relic now, the emissary's hat. Yeah, you can give evasion to other heroes, but her her herself is very good and very strong, and still very oppressive. And it's just evasion, man. Like evasion is so freaking strong in this game, in this state of the game, in my opinion. And it's gonna be very hard to balance the more evasion they're gonna introduce into the game. And I think she still feels really good in S tier. Something that no one else can do but her. And that is it for my May 2024 general hero tier list. Um what? Let me let me go let me look at this real quick. Let me look at it. It has changed a lot. I must say my head is blocking some of it. I am so sorry. But um let me know in the comments below what do you think about my tier list what do you disagree with what do you agree with what are your rankings for dandelion and the new rework kanak and as a reminder i update this hero tier list every month so be sure to subscribe and keep up with that one and as always thumbs if you liked it subs if you loved it and i'll see you next one boys later